morning, folks. Today I want to briefly discuss cognitive biases for publishers. Our minds are very complex, or well, at least mine is, and our choices are often influenced by strange factors. Today, I want to touch very briefly on the psychology of persuasion and focus particularly on cognitive biases. I can't do justice to the topic, especially not in three minutes, but I'd like to pique your interest by mentioning a few of the factors that publishers should consider in marketing and sales efforts. Now, cognitive biases are mental shortcuts that we take to process the world more quickly. Evolutionary psychology would suggest that cognitive biases are generally useful, otherwise, why would we have them? But they can also lead to errors in judgment. One of the more common is confirmation bias, which is the tendency to latch on to information that confirms our existing beliefs and to ignore or downplay contradictory evidence. I'm not suggesting that you use confirmation bias, but that you be aware of it. I have a funny story about this. My friend Dell sells local honey. People believe that local honey can help with allergies. Dell has looked into this and says it's not true, no matter how much he'd like it to be true. The funny thing is that it's hard for him to convince people out of that belief, even though it would help him uh, to sell his honey. Anchoring bias is our tendency to rely too heavily on the first piece of information we receive. This is particularly relevant in headline writing. Think of all the times you read a headline, then read the story and realized the story was deceptive. It's also relevant in pricing. By presenting a higher price first, you establish a perception of value. And then when you present the lower price, people feel like they're getting a deal. Fear of loss is a very powerful tool in the marketer's toolkit. People are more afraid of losing something then they're motivated to gain something. This applies to messages like, don't miss out, only two days left. Scarcity bias is similar to fear of loss. It's the tendency to place a higher value on something that is perceived as scarce or limited in quality. Marketers can use scarcity tactics by highlighting limited time offers, exclusive deals, or limited stock availability to create a sense of urgency to drive consumer action. The bandwagon effect is the tendency to believe what everybody else believes, and marketers can take advantage of the bandwagon effect with social proof, like customer testimonials, user-generated content, or even just claiming that it's a popular choice. The framing effect refers to how you present the data. Is the meat 80% lean or 20% fat? Is $100 the full retail price of the jacket, or is it 50% off the full retail price of $200? It's $100 either way, right? Choice overload or choice paralysis happens when there are too many options. We usually think it's good to have options, but not always because it's work to figure out which is the right one. I remember once when I was on my way to a night class and I was dead tired. I wanted a cup of coffee and a candy bar so I could make it through class. I stopped at a little roadside market that had 25 varieties of coffee and 600,000 candy bars. It was the only time in my life that I wished I was in the Soviet Union, and my only choice was coffee, candy bar. Anyway, two more. The halo effect is when you extend one positive feature to the whole product or brand. The attractive salesman must be a good person and wouldn't lie to you, right? And, and the taller candidate must be the better leader. The priming effect is when one stimulus influences another. You play Italian music and more people at your restaurant buy Italian wine or you show happy people using your product and people associate the product with being happy. Now, obviously there are ethical implications to these biases uh, to manipulate customer behavior. In my opinion, as long as you're selling a good product and you're not lying, you can use these techniques without being a rotten bastard, but you're gonna have to figure that side of it out on your own. Anyway, I hope you appreciate today's Something I Learned Yesterday and like and share this video and visit me at cravelgroup.com. Thanks so much.